Wah, wah, wah. Everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is Johnny number five. This is a heister forklift. And if you follow along with uh, the Instagram page or on Facebook, you'll know that we were trying to unload my grandpa's old Pepsi Cola soda pop machine. It's one of these cool ones with the uh, door that opens up. You have the bottles. And unloading it, we got it in the garage, but right there is where she died. So we think we have a fuel problem and we necked it down to fuel is not getting out of this vaporizer, which I know really nothing about propane fuel systems, but I do know that fuel is coming in here at high pressure and on this feed hose that it connects to the carburetor, no fuel is coming out. So we're going to take a look at this. My Limited knowledge knows that this is the primer button. Uh, it's about all I got. Now this is the primer button. I know coolant flows through it to heat up the fuel. That's about it. So we're gonna dive into this thing and see if we can figure out why fuel is not coming from, fuel coming in here is not coming out at the carburetor. Um, we have our sweet tailgate workbench because our real workbench is covered in too much junk. Really need to clean stuff up here. And the Icon 1970s orange coffee mug. Made in USA. Good. Here we go. Imco Model J or Impco, however you're gonna pronounce it. It's like they're readily available on the internet and they have rebuild kits. It'd be really cool if there's just like a clog filter in this or something that we can just clean out. Diaphragms attached to this lever. This lever must allow fuel in from the other side of this, from this line, from the other side of this cavity into here. There's a bunch of goo down here. That's probably inside this valve too. Like grease. It's probably part of the problem. So that'd be interesting. I think this screw holds the whole hinged mechanism on there. Yep. The little shaft for it to pivot on. Spring, close it. And that's just a stopper. 
covers a hole. Hmm. That will clog really. It's a big wide open hole. Take this over to the air compressor and hit this with some air and see if a few, uh, air comes out of there. Okay, I applied air pressure here and I definitely have a good flow of air coming out of there. So. I don't see why, unless this was not opening. I don't really see why that wouldn't work. Unless this was stuck closed. So I'm going to clean this out with a little WD-40 and a shop towel. Okay, just looking at this. I mean, visually anyways. I don't see any major tears or any sections that look damaged we're going to put this back on this guy definitely hooks on this lever put our current bring back in So, this is how this is supposed to work. This diaphragm hooks on this lever, and this goes to the carburetor, and when the carburetor pulls vacuum, it's gonna pull this diaphragm down and open the spring, and if there's no vacuum, it's gonna close off the fuel source. As long as this diaphragm's pulling vacuum, it'll open fuel. Hook that back on there. There we go. Pop our screws back in, put her back together. A small chance, after looking at this a little closer and the way it works, that if this isn't getting vacuum from the engine, to open that valve there's a small chance there's a valve stuck in the engine or uh, some bad valves that need lapped so let's hope it's not that and I'm gonna try to put this back in try starting it again if it doesn't start I'm gonna hold this primer button it'll manually open that die or that valve and allow fuel to the carburetor if that works, the engine either isn't giving it enough vacuum or this diaphragm could be damaged and we just couldn't tell. Always do a diamond pattern. 
so it goes down nice and even and then I'll go all the way around and check everyone Alright, let's get it back in there and see what happens. So this is a coolant line here in the bottom. Huh? This hose clamp ain't co isn't cooperating very nicely. So that coolant line up on the top. Feed from the regulator. This is incoming propane. And we need our supply line to the carburetor. Okay, that's all hooked up now, and we should, if I turn the gas on and push that primer, I should get fuel out of there. Just kidding. The regulator has a vacuum port, so I need engine vacuum to turn the regulator on to feed the vaporizer to go over there. So I'm going to have to crank the engine with the vacuum line connected to the regulator here. Not enough hands here. Okay, I'm holding the primer button with the screwdriver. Yeah, it's definitely feeding fuel. So we're going to hook this guy back up over here to there and see if that's pulling the vacuum. I hooked it back up and I'm going to hold this primer button in so it gets fuel and see if that makes it run if not we got something wrong with the carburetor or some stuck valves i like to think the valves aren't stuck in the engine because i'm getting enough vacuum over here to open the regulator so it's probably something in the carburetor not allowing vacuum to reach the vaporizer we'll see Obviously a big diaphragm. Well, I have no idea how these carburetors work. This is a horrible idea, but I'm going to give her a little sniff of the old juice here and see if uh, maybe I'm not missing something else. Nothing. I 
I think we got a spark issue again. We lost spark again. Hey. Now we got spark there. Or maybe we're just not getting it through the rotor button. Okay, I just noticed that the rotor button itself is actually missing a chunk of plastic here. The drive dog's still there. This is like this, uh, I guess ever since I bought it. No big deal. It doesn't look like the plastic's in there. So they need a new one of these. Oh boy. We got our new parts kit off the internet. We have brand new distributor cap. It's the screw down kind. I guess that makes a big difference on these. They, they have multiple distributor types and this particular model uses the screw in kind and not the clip on. Have a new rotor button. Oops. Our new mechanical points. So the seller gave us a little note here. Tells us what the correct plug gap is and what the point gap is and how to adjust it and call them if you have any questions. This is the gentleman that I purchased them from off of uh, eBay. It's very nice. He helped answer if uh, these were the right parts for my forklift. So if this works, I definitely recommend calling this gentleman for your parts. He's very helpful. Okay, this is my gauge to check spark plug gaps. It has a kind of a ramped edge. So as you go around it, it increases. So it's probably too shiny to read, but down here is 20 thousandths, up here is 50 thousandths, here is 50 thousandths to 80 thousandths. So the center section hits the edge of my spark plug base. So I have to read it upside down, it makes it kind of a major pain. It's really close to 25. I'm gonna call that one good enough. Now I just need to check the rest of them. The hard part is I gotta check it upside down, look where it's at here, and then flip it over. So as long as we're close, I'm gonna call it good. I'm betting the gentleman who sold it these were, was nice enough to send them pre-gapped. We'll see. So it's stopping in between 20 and 30, so that's close enough on that one. Two more to go. You don't ever want to force it, just slide it so it starts to drag. And then look at the number. Usually you just look down, but you know, as I said, I have to do this upside down because of the plug so big. It's good. It's good. Those are all good.
Just trying to get all the crud out from around the spark plugs so when we take the spark plugs out it uh, doesn't allow all that crap to fall back into the cylinders. It's just old rust and junk and who knows what's in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all the spark plug wires so I know which cylinder they go to. Remove this rotor and then get in there with a screwdriver and scrape around and vacuum it out a little bit better so uh, none of that junk falls down inside. There's always got to be one. Uh. Well, looks like I missed you on the first cylinder. Well, we're ruining the surprise until we get this one get gauged, and I'll tell you what the first cylinder was. There we go. So we got about. 90 a little less than what the previous one had the first one uh, was a little bit more just a shade above 90 and it might even have gotten to the same spot if I did one more cycle so I'm gonna say these are pretty well close enough okay I installed all the new spark plugs I actually put uh, I don't normally do this but uh, the spark plugs were kind of squeaky and threading in a little little sticky so I put uh, never seize on all the threads of the spark plugs just to kind of ensure that they'll come out in the future I never really use it because I don't I don't like that stuff very much because it just gets everywhere. But uh, I put it on these, make sure the plugs don't get stuck in there in the future. So now we're looking at our point setup. I don't normally work on these. I haven't worked on one in many years, but it's a relatively simple concept. 
This is the condenser. Here's the actual points unit. This, this contact here opens and closes. And every time that opens and closes and makes a connection there, it tells the coil to distribute a spark. And this rides on this cam here, right on the distributor shaft. So as this spins, this opens and closes. Making this connection, sending a signal out through this wire that goes to the coil, telling the coil to spark. So I'll crank it over and you can you can watch it just to see how it works. So if you look closely, this gap here opens and closes. I mean that's exaggerated. But that's the gap that we need to set. Because you don't want it to open too far. You just want it to open enough to break the spark or to break the contact. So it allows the coil time to energize to build up a spark and then when it closes that tells the coil to spark. So let's rip all this stuff off of here. Clean it up and put the new parts on. So I decided it was easier to remove the unit as the whole plate. Put all the new pieces on here and then throw it back on the engine and adjust the point gap. Off with the old. This little pen extension goes in the hole and it pivots to adjust the point gap. Okay, all we need so now is the trigger wire for the coil and to adjust the point gap once it's in on the distributor. Okay, well I'm not overly fond with how it turned out, but I did get that other forked in soldered to my new wire. And it just kind of sits behind the spring force on that. There's no real bolt or anything. I'm not overly fond of that, but you know, it looks like it's looks like that's how it's intended to work, or at least that's the only way that I know to make it work. Barring adding a bolt or a screw to that. So we're gonna get this back in the forklift. And if we get any troubles with this, we'll leave the wire a little on the long side. We'll put a new end on this. Okay, I mentioned it earlier, but we were in a time lapse. I believe this spring mechanism uh, might be a mechanical advance. Could be wrong, but I think maybe when the RPMs go up, the weights and the springs fly outward. Got a little piece of scotch brite or emery cloth and uh, clean this cam lobe up a little.
Okay, as you can see, if you can see, the point gap is open. It's open quite a bit right now. And it's almost on the high, one of the high lobes. It has multiple lobes, one for each uh, spark plug. So right here where my screwdriver is, is a flat. Over here just a little bit more is a high lobe. Let's bump it around until we can get it on top of one of the high lobes. There, it's on a flat. This rider right here that follows the cam is on a flat, so this connection is closed. We went right over that one. Went over that one. We might have to try to manually bar this over. So we've rotated the engine over manually, so the cams on this distributor shaft are contacting the rider, which is on our new point set right there. And the rider is on the high spot, which is making the points open. So we're going to stick our feeler blade in between the gap here and adjust the screw. Then tighten the screw and then recheck it. This gap right here. You stick your screwdriver in there and use that to adjust it. You want to feel just a, it's a little difficult with this feeler blade and the camera in the way, but you want to make sure at A it's in there nice and straight. You want to feel just a little drag. On the feeler blade. Tighten it up. Double check it. Got a new rotor button. Uh oh. Okay. Whew, didn't think it was going to fit for a minute. Okay. And our new distributor cap. This wire out of the way. Those are the new plug wires now. It's a little trick I learned a long time ago the hard way. 
I took the cap off but I left all the old wires on the cap and I marked them with that pink marker and marked the engine in this particular case so I knew which one went to which corresponding plug wire. Now all I have to do is put the new wires on in the same orientation here and put them on the correct plug using the old one as a template. Okay, so I lengthened the main power wire because it's a little short, tend the end and formed it into a hook so I could put it on the uh, coil without a crimp connection because I'm short on those. This is the trigger from the points. I'm going to do the same thing. Form this hook and I'm going to hook it around the screw on the distributor or not distributor, hook it around the screw on the coil. And to do it correctly, you hook it around so when you tighten it, it wants to close the loop. Johnny number five moves again. That's great. We still need to do more to it, obviously, but uh, yeah, we can move it out of the middle of the garage. And Grandpa's old soda pot machine is no longer stuck on the forks. This thing is cool. All right, Johnny number five's moving. The soda pot machine's off of the forks, and we're looking for another project. Just kidding. We got way too many projects lined up, so don't worry. There's more to come on different topics and different things. I didn't uh, include it in this video because it was getting really long. If you noticed the first start on the forklift, it seemed a little rough and it moved around a little bit. And that was due to the fact that that screw that retained the points and set it the point gap actually was stripped out. Uh, Probably my fault. Uh, I noticed the screw went in a little bit uh, 
harder than it should have when I put it back in and also when I originally removed it it came out rather firm so I probably should have addressed it in the first place but uh, I thought it would be okay apparently not the screw vibrated loose in the engine and the points lost their timing and adjustment so I needed to remove the point set weld up the hole and drill and tap a new hole for that screw basically the same procedure that I performed in uh, this video is just with a little welding and uh, drilling and tapping so you get the idea the forklift uh, definitely runs better now I believe it's pretty reliable and go out and start it just by turning on the turning on the fuel need to uh, definitely get a different battery set up for it because that uh, battery hanging off the side is no good as always thanks for watching everybody leave all those questions and comments in that little space down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if you're listening Dave I'm giving you the smile and the thumbs up that's for you catch you later